And if a man without arms and legs is dreaming for the heavens, then why do you think you're different? And when I started traveling around the world at age 19, and you start going to see places and meet people, I, I look at everyone in the eyes. The eyes are the windows to your soul. When I look at you, you look at me. Soon you might actually forget that I have no limbs. And when I look you in the eye, it's me subconsciously looking at you and telling you you matter and that you have my undivided attention to the point where you're the only one in the room. And this is called connectivity. This is called connection. And I'll tell you right now, as I look around the world and we look at now 8 billion people you know, it's interesting, as, as we all have different belief systems, as a Christian, the greatest commandment is loving God. The second commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. What that actually means is love the world. Love the world. Love everyone in the world. You may not agree with a lot of the stuff going on in the world. There's a lot of things that if you and I just sat enough times together, you're going to find something that I disagree with you on. Period. My parents always told me as a teenager, Nick, get as many passports as possible because you have no idea what the world's going to look like. My mom and dad, they always told me, Nick, be thankful for what you have. Nick, there's a greater plan and purpose for your life. Nick, there's going to be times when the world's not going to want you. And remember when you have something in your hand to, to have just remember the people who have nothing. This is how I was raised. When I went to the shopping mall, we are so selfish. Our human nature is so selfish, so self-centered, so prideful. It's unbelievable how selfish we really are. Where we even subconsciously have this subliminal pride of knowing who we are and that's our identity I identify myself as a good person who does good things that when I die I'm going to be remembered as a good person is that good enough for you? that's not good enough for me you see when you go into the world you understand that there is this, uh, this, this illumination there's this ignition where it goes from theory into practice to then lifestyle. Of understanding that there is never a more important person in this world than the person standing right in front of you at any given time. There is this illumination and this hunger to make this world a better place to understand that we should not be complacent in just hoarding things and giving our children everything they want, when they want it, how they want it, because that only boosts entitlement and a sense of pride and selfishness and greed, which then subliminally puts our succession compass on the north of Money, drugs, sex, alcohol, pornography, fame and fortune, position, getting a job, climbing up the ladder, getting married, having kids, and having grandkids. Is there something more? And so with 2 billion people going hungry today and about 70 million human traffic slaves in the world, yes, how do we love our world? How do we love our world? What happens when you don't get your miracle? Because your miracle may not come. You be one. You be one. And some of us need to wake up and get a little bit more courageous and a little bit more uncomfortable and a little bit more generous. I want you to know that dreams come true. I want you to know that I want you to achieve your goals and your dreams. But when we talk about purpose, it's making the world a better place. Period. Period. I never thought that I would ever be someone living in purpose. When I was a kid and I told my mom and dad, Hey, mom and dad, why was I born this way? They're like, we don't know why. But God does. And he didn't talk to me. He didn't talk to me. And so I went through depression. I 
looked at everyone. They looked at me. I saw they had arms and legs. I didn't have arms and legs. My brother and sister had arms and legs. I didn't have arms and legs. No one knew I was born this way. No one knew that I was going to be born this way until I was actually born. And kids would come up to me and ask me, what happened? I say, cigarettes. It was a very effective anti-smoking campaign. And I go to the stores and I say, Mom and Dad, I want that. They never bought me anything I wanted from the store. You want to know why? Because they knew that if they gave me everything I wanted, when I wanted it, how I wanted it, they would actually ill-prepare me for the world. So they said, figure it out. Can you say that, those three words? Figure it out. Go. Figure it out. Get your own money. Buy it yourself. You don't have money? Try figure it out. So then I picked up the vacuum cleaner with my shoulder and my chin, and I vacuumed the house, and I got $2 a week, and I wanted a $15 toy that I saw at the mall, and I knew that I would have to work hard for eight weeks to actually save up 16 bucks. And when I finally got my 16 bucks, I went back to the store, and I looked at that toy, and I'm like, Is this what I really want? And of course I bought it. I loved it. But it was amazing. I mean, the fact that I was able to work for money. Do you know it's good to work for money? Can someone tell Gen Z that? It is good to work for money. And it was amazing because it taught me how to set goals. You know, we could talk about all day long about purpose and making the world a better place. You ain't going to do anything until you actually do something. And you just think about one day, I wonder what, what, what would you do with all the money in the world? What would you do if you had a million dollars to actually give away? Oh, we don't think about that because a million bucks, well, that's, that's just too much money. Really? Why? 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 Why can't you not be a multi-millionaire? Why can't you not be a multi-billionaire? You see, our problem as human beings is if we're in the tech space, I want to be like Elon Musk. Why do you say that? Go beyond him. What do you think Elon Musk said to himself when he was achieving what he did do you think Nikola Tesla died with some dreams that were untold and dreams that were unachieved you see the people Zig Ziglar once said aim your goals and dreams to the heavens so if they miss they're still up there with the stars you are the person that's actually stopping your full potential because you can't even dream big yet and it starts with writing down your goal Write down your dream and put it somewhere. Google what a vision board is. Put up what you want. What do you want? You want a Maybach Mercedes? Put that up on your wall. You want to sponsor some kids? Good. At age 19, I sponsored 10. We've given away $4 million to the poor and needy between me and my family and the nonprofit organization. If a man without arms and legs is dreaming for the heavens, then why do you think you're different? You actually have an advantage. You have limbs. It's amazing. We got to wake up. This is the time to move. This is the time to double down. This is not the time to figure out who of, of you agree with me. And if I agree with you on blah, 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 can we get unified on making the world a better place? Can we do that? Can we do that? Oh, but the next time you go out into public, look people in the eye. Kids, you never know what prayer they just prayed. God, no one notices me. 